Making your own PC build is quite a task. It can easily get overwhelming, especially with all the jargon and technical terms you may encounter in looking for computer parts. Graphics cards are just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to building your own PC. What up guys, Mikael here from Yigatech and today's video is a simple guide to NVIDIA GeForce GPUs, particularly their naming scheme and some things to consider when choosing a graphics card for your build. Graphics card, also known as a graphics processing unit or GPU, is responsible for generating images that you see on your computer's display. A rule of thumb is the more powerful a GPU is, the better visual or graphical experience it can bring. Today, Nvidia's lineup of GPUs are divided into two tiers, RTX and GTX. You may have already seen the memes about the RTX mode on and off, and that's exactly what describes this tier. RTX, or in technical terms, Ray Tracing Texel Extreme, as the name suggests, has real-time ray tracing tech that provides more realistic visual effects like improved global illumination, shadows, and reflections. This is especially useful for playing new and old games, giving them better visual fidelity. GTX, on the other hand, is the more affordable tier, with the main difference being no support for ray tracing and DLSS. The term DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling Tech that uses AI to upscale lower resolution images without sacrificing performance. Another notable difference is the GTX 16 series. 2019 was the last generation of the GTX line. Turns out, NVIDIA has discontinued the GTX line in the first quarter of 2024, as the company fully shifts to RTX branding. So, at this time, it may be better to go for RTX GPUs. Long before, there was also a GT line for entry-level graphics cards, but that has also since been discontinued. You may have heard of the so-called integrated graphics. Basically, GPUs that are attached directly to the computer's CPU. This is more common in laptop PCs though, crucial for portability. An integrated graphics card basically does the same thing, but its performance won't be on par with discrete or dedicated GPUs. However, that's another topic to look into, maybe a topic for another video. Now, before we go into the naming convention, let's discuss some of the usual specifications to look for in choosing a graphics card. Spoiler alert, the higher the number, the better. First on the list is the number of CUDA cores. These are the backbones of NVIDIA GPUs, which are specialized processors designed to handle multiple tasks at the same time with these. The higher the CUDA cores, the more efficient the graphics card will be, which is ideal for gaming, creative tasks, or even AI and simulation tasks. Comparing the latest RTX 4080 to the RTX 3050, both have CUDA cores of 9728 and 2560 respectively. The number of CUDA cores also change depending on other factors such as the number of VRAM, which we're talking about next. VRAM, which stands for Video Random Access Memory, is similar to RAM found in smartphones. There's also dedicated memory inside a graphics card that stores and handles data related to video or graphics processing. Another important parameter related to memory is the memory bus which is a pathway that enables data flow between the GPU and VRAM. This is measured in bits per cycle, and the wider the memory bus is, the better the VRAM performance. For example, a 256-bit interface will marginally perform faster than a 128-bit. Other specifications like the display resolution, PCIe card bus, clock speeds, and even the physical dimensions of the graphics card are prominently shown in the spec sheet. These are also important to look into for the sake of compatibility. For example, your graphics card can output up to an 8K display resolution running at a 144Hz refresh rate, but your monitor can only handle 1080p at 75Hz. This could mean going for a cheaper graphics card can match the display monitor specs better. 
Furthermore, we also need to take note that most of the higher spec graphics cards are usually physically larger in size to account for thermals, so that's still something to take note of. Finally, let's move on to the naming convention. Graphics cards in general seem to have a better naming scheme than the CPUs from Intel or AMD, and you'll see why. Looking at our example here on screen, we have the Gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 OC 8GB GDDR6 128-bit. That's quite a mouthful, but you'll usually see product names laid out like this. Gigabyte is the brand name, and as you all know, NVIDIA also partners with different manufacturers to offer their GPU products. The term GeForce is basically the company's brand name, and of course, RTX as discussed earlier is the product tier. The first two digits, the 4-0 or 40, refers to the generation, and it's the latest one so far. The other two digits indicate the variant belonging to different performance tiers. The higher the last two digit numbers, the more powerful it will be. As for the other terms, OC means this GPU is overclocked to 2475 MHz from 2460 MHz on the regular stock RTX 4060. And as discussed earlier, 8GB of GDDR6 refers to VRAM capacity, and lastly, 128-bit is the memory bus. Other GPU products may also boast the monikers Super, that slightly improves performance, or TI, that typically comes with even greater performance ideal for gamers. TI means titanium, offering more CUDA cores, more VRAM, and higher clock speeds than the standard models. Essentially, the tiering for this is the base model, Super, and then TI at the top. So there you have it, a short explainer on NVIDIA GeForce GPUs. Having a bit of knowledge for understanding the spec sheet and labels will come a long way in navigating the GPU market. This makes it easier to match your PC build with a graphics card for your specific profession and gaming needs. Did we miss anything? Don't hesitate to share some of your own tips and thoughts in the comments section below. Before you guys go, you may also want to watch our 2023 guide to AMD and Intel CPUs right here. But if you found this video informative, educational, or a little fun, be sure to smack that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that bell icon so you get notified of our future uploads. Be sure to visit yugatech.com and follow us on all our social media platforms. That's Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok for the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been Miguel, and I'll see you in the next one.